Five months ago, I dedicated one of my first in-depth videos to Death Stranding. It's already a special game, one that has managed to grab my attention in a way I've never seen before. From the very beginning, I have been absolutely intrigued by the story of this game. Now, Hideo Kojima certainly intended to be as vague as he could with the scenes that he has shown so far, but that didn't take away from this world, the characters and the premise that we did get to feel incredibly interesting. But what would the game play like? It was by far the biggest question on everyone's mind. A week has passed since Sony showed off a highly anticipated new trailer at E3 2018. This time around, it featured gameplay footage for the very first time, but if one thing became clear, it's that we still don't quite know all the answers. In pure Kojima fashion, the tease was enough to once again get people speculating without giving everything away. In fact, I would argue it wasn't just the gameplay, but especially the story that raised even more questions while answering some as well. In the last week, I have been obsessively re-watching the footage, as well as looking up theories online and trying to make up my own mind as to what it is that we actually saw. I tried to put things together, see how it could all be connected in a way that made sense. Ultimately, I came to the realization that sadly it is true, the crucial pieces of this puzzle are still missing. However, as some pieces have fallen into place, it's become clear to me that the story of Death Stranding is even bigger than we initially thought. Sam Porter preaches. The man who delivers. The very first thing that we hear in the latest trailer is how an unknown voice calls Sam by the names Sam Porter Bridges. At first sight, you might take this as Sam's full name, but I was immediately caught off guard upon hearing this. You might remember that the words Porter and Bridges have a significant meaning that we already discussed previously. A porter is a person employed to carry equipment and other loads. Not only that, it is the word or company name displayed on Sam's outfit. Bridges, on the other hand, refers to the government corporation from the last few trailers. Its logo shows the outlines of the United States, covered by a giant spider web. The center of the web points to Washington DC, with the line, the United Cities of America, displayed at the bottom. Now, Guillermo del Toro's character has been connected to Bridges, as well as the two characters who died in the previous trailer. The name Sam Porter Bridges would be strangely related to both of these organizations, which just made me think that surely it couldn't be his actual name, right? I'll see you around. Sam Porter Bridges. I figured out that most likely the new character cheekily threw in the word Porter after Sam's disappointing response. She asks him to come work for her, but Sam replies by saying that he'd rather stay being just a delivery guy, hence a porter. The PlayStation blog does call him by the name Sam Bridges, indicating that indeed, at least Bridges is his actual last name. This raises many questions of course as to what Sam's actual connection is with the Bridges company, but that's something we'll explore even further towards the end of this video. We learn quite a bit about Sam. The new voice mentions his tears, referring to it as a chiral allergy. You may remember how there were various occasions where we saw tears roll off of Sam's face, not quite understanding why yet. Explaining it as an allergic reaction makes perfect sense, but to what would that be? Sam's skin turns red as soon as the oil-shaped handprints appear, indicating that its presence has various physical effects on his body. The term chiral originates from the Greek word chair, which means hand. Hands are chiral objects. In other words, indeed, it is the oil-shaped hands, the presence of the creatures that pass by, that most likely cause his allergic reactions. The last thing we find out is that because of his tears, Sam must have so-called dooms. It's a word that is used to describe the powers to perceive the presence of these strange alternate reality creatures. Sam mentions that he has the extinction factor, which means that he can sense them being close, however he can't see them. 
And this makes a lot of sense in retrospect when you go back to the very first trailer in which you can tell that Sam doesn't seem quite sure where to look after the five floating bodies appear in the sky. Heard you call my name. I was initially very surprised by this latest trailer, especially because of the different tone and the environments that were presented to us. Sure, there were clues out there that the game would be heavily inspired by the nature in Iceland, but now was when we truly got that confirmation. The result was also that the game turned out to be a lot more silent and beautiful than I expected it to be, and I am very curious how it will manage to mix that vibe with the scenes of tension that we can undoubtedly expect as well. Now, it wasn't until last December that the mechanic of Timefall was presented to us, and at that point it still seemed pretty vague. It showed how the rain affected plants, making them rapidly grow and die within the time span of just a few seconds. The really extreme showcase was one of the characters in the trailer that got exposed to the rain and became older in an instant. Now, the newest footage gives us a look at this bizarre phenomenon once more. As Sam reaches out to grab a picture on the ground, a drop of rain falls onto the back of his hand. That little spot is affected instantly, exposing wrinkles and veins, it's quite disturbing. With the rain impacting the aging process, the time for effects are apparently tied to all of the water in this world. There is a moment in which you can see Sam wading through a river, but unfortunately slips. Notice how his suit is equipped with a life vest that automatically deploys and inflates. Not only that, it mechanically wraps the hood over his head to prevent him from touching the water any longer. This is all meant to protect him from the effects of Timefall. If you go back and watch all four of the trailers, you'll quickly realize that one of them all of a sudden feels strangely out of place. It's the one with Matt Mickelson's reveal, taking place in what seemed to be a World War II-like setting, with old planes flying over a destroyed city and skeleton soldiers carrying M1 rifles. While you could easily argue that there might be different timelines being explored in the game, I'm not so sure if that all makes sense. See, Death Stranding is an open world game, and hardly any games in the genre go through the extra effort to build scenes outside of its already massive world. I have a wild theory that the Timefall could have impacted several parts of the world in individual ways. Certain cities may live in the past while others have advanced in technology. This would also explain the vast difference in technology being used by all characters, like how a mystery person in the previous trailer was seen with a highly advanced mechanical arm, yet the skeleton soldiers use equipment from the 1940s. If this turns out to be true, well, you can already let your imagination loose as to what we could possibly encounter. Apparently, there are certain rules and exceptions to the effects of the timefall, though. The new character tells Sam that the pastures won't let go, and this is visually made clear to us. Landscapes are still intact, complete with moss, rocks, plants, even some animal life is still preserved. Somehow, the timefall only seems to affect specific areas, covered in mud or some other substance, though it's hard to tell why that is yet. That being said, in one moment we see Sam sitting down in the shower, but in this case the water doesn't seem to affect him at all. That could be because of some filtering process, but it's way too early to know for sure. Note how Sam also keeps his handcuffs on during this sequence. I guess just like real ones, they were never supposed to be taken off, making me wonder how every character got these handcuffs in the first place. In one of the next scenes of this trailer, more of the giant hand marks approach Sam, but not before straight up touching a photo on the ground. Now here is the catch, the photo is not damaged in the slightest, in fact, if you look closely, the handprint is formed below it. This finally seems to bring an end to all of the speculation on whether there is an alternate reality like I theorized, or if these creatures are simply invisible. Indeed, it seems that there is a parallel universe where these creatures reside. Whether you've been on board for the ride from day one or have remained skeptical about Death Stranding, we all shared the same burning question, and that was, what is the gameplay going to be? 
While we certainly have a better understanding now, the reality is that we still don't quite know. Kojima has said that he looks at Sam not as a classic hero, a person with military training or some other elite background, he'd rather compare him to the average blue collar worker, a guy simply doing his job and knowing how to handle himself. That's why the gameplay will differ somewhat too. Now this is obviously showcased because right now, Sam simply seems to be a delivery guy. Now sure, the one thing that I've seen brought up a lot so far is that the game looks like a plain walking simulator. While I definitely couldn't disagree, I am 100% sure that there is much more to it than that. Me personally, I expect many survival elements to be introduced. Sam drinks from a bottle of water during a gameplay sequence, and he's also seen ripping his own toenail off, which honestly gave me the shivers. I could easily see the players having to make these choices themselves and gather resources to remain in good condition throughout. There is also a motorcycle that we see falling off a cliff, confirming that there are vehicles enabling you to get from one place to another much more quickly. According to Kojima, Death Stranding is a game about reconnecting the world. This got me thinking about the actual purpose of the gameplay. See, I wouldn't be surprised if the extreme circumstances have caused for all communication methods to disappear. Many of the packages that we see Sam carrying around might very well contain equipment to set up time for resistant radio towers. He could be traveling between settlements and protected cities to deliver food, resources, bodies found along the way, and of course he could act as a messenger in order to find out together what has exactly happened and how it can be dealt with. In all ways, it reminds me of a post-apocalyptic game, although this time around, there are no zombies, there are threats much bigger that can come out of nowhere. It would make so much sense, uniting the cities of America is what the Bridges Company does, and therefore what Sam is also trying to achieve. But of course there is gonna be combat as well, and it's already been teased to us in many ways. For starters, there is a moment we literally see Sam take out a gun. The previous trailer showed a character using one to defend himself, and trust me, those armed skeleton soldiers introduced to us a while ago weren't shown for no reason. But while combat will be a possibility, it's no requirement, and Kojima has already confirmed this. You can play the game however you want to play it, but the hope is that you'll find yourself not wanting to all the time. Stealth will play a massive role, and it's no wonder that the last minutes of this video heavily focus on it. It's the one aspect where it was great to see my own theories being confirmed. First off, Sam has radio contact with a guy who tells him the consequences of failing the mission. If one of those things eats you, it'll trigger a void out. You'll come back, sure, but the surrounding area will still be a crater. If you've paid attention, this all should sound very familiar to you, because we saw this exact scenario play out in the last trailer. It's hard to tell if being eaten necessarily means by one of those giant monsters like we saw previously, or if the regular entities caused this to happen as well, but one thing is clear. Once this happens, the world will be affected, and massive craters leave a forever lasting impact in the places you have died. Sam connects his mechanical arm to the baby in the incubator, and this confirms what we discussed last time, how the baby can spot enemies and controls your arm. The stealth gameplay is exactly what I described. The arm points in specific directions and you are expected to find your way through without getting too close. The way you see Sam crouch, how he moves through these environments, it looks very similar to Metal Gear Solid 5 and as a massive fan you definitely won't see me complain. However, that all still seems rather basic, so I wonder what other mechanics will be introduced to us to add even more depth to these systems. For example, at one point, Sam is shown covering his mouth with both hands to not make any sounds, and I am very curious to see if the players will have some control over these choices. This stealth section ultimately ends with Sam getting caught, but it's pretty obvious that that was simply done on purpose. You can visually see the arm detecting enemies in front, but Sam completely ignores these signs and continues to move straight forward anyway. The consequence is that he's spotted by the enemy creatures, and judging from the gameplay, they seem pretty unforgiving and impossible to escape.
For a long time, Kojima had told us that the characters introduced so far, played by Norman Reedus and Mads Mikkelsen, wouldn't be the only stars of this game. Two unnamed female roles were revealed to us in this trailer, who for the sake of simplicity are just called by the names of their actresses in this video. The first and most focused on is played by Lea Seydoux. She's the voice that we hear in the very beginning, speaking to Sam about his condition. A little later on, she fully appears on screen, attempting to protect him from the threat that approaches. Interestingly enough, one of the first things we see is how she also uses a hush sign, alerting Sam not to make a sound. This is a returning element, and we've established by now that the enemies can spot signs of life, while, for example, functioning machines will stay undetected. This gives a range of new possibilities as to who the mysterious person was in the last trailer, as I initially felt that the hush sign could be a trademark of Matt Mickelson's character. Now I ask myself, could it also have been Leia, or even was it someone else entirely? The five floating bodies also return, but they are hard to spot, so you might have missed them this time around. Up until now, we hardly knew anything about them, like where their allegiance actually lies. Now, Leia is equipped with a protective suit, showing spikes as soon as enemies come close. The moment that the five creatures disappear is the moment we see these spikes retract, making it all the more plausible that they are definitely not on the same side after all. What we do know is that Leia has a lot in common with Sam. She also suffers from chiral allergy, implied by a nod or tear rolling down her face, and the two discuss how she may even be in a worse state than Sam himself. But that is not the only resemblance, Leia seems to be a transporter too. Upon closer look, her jacket displays the logo for a company called Fragile Express, with the tagline, Handled with Love. This explains why she asks Sam to come work for her, although this line of work seems to include a lot more than just making deliveries. While Sam is equipped with a suit that protects him from the timefall, Leia uses a much more traditional way to protect herself, in the form of a very futuristic looking umbrella. It even has its own trembling feature, likely to get rid of accumulated rain, though I wonder if there's more to this piece of tech than meets the eye. One of the last scenes is rather weird. Leia eats a cryptobite, a large version of what in the real world is known as a tardigrade. According to her, it keeps the time for away. Now, tardigrades are micro-insects that are known for being able to withstand extreme conditions. Exposure to high temperatures, radiation, starvation, dehydration, and extreme pressures all these things would be rapidly fatal to other life forms, but the tardigrade is able to resist it all. It makes a lot of sense that these animals play a larger role, because if one thing is clear by now, it's that the world isn't actually in the state we know it to be. You may recall that in the last trailer, upon coming back to life, Sam pukes out some of these animals, so it's easy to tell that they will have a significant use. The second new character is played by Lindsay Wagner, and it's safe to say that her true identity is one of the biggest mysteries yet. First of all, let's take a look back at the picture that Sam inspects in the cave. On it, we see a smiling Lindsay looking very resemblant to how she looks in real life. At the forefront is Sam Bridges, and next to him, what looks to be Leia's character. It's hard to tell because her face is blurred out by a drop of rain, and for a reason. Were Sam and Leia's character together before it all went down? Note how Leia is pregnant as well. Does this have any connection to the baby that Death Stranding so deliberately focuses on? It seems almost unthinkable that it doesn't. But here's where it gets even crazier. The three are standing in the Oval Office of the White House. Does this mean that Lindsay's character was the President of America before everything went down? And why can't Sam remember this? Does he have some form of amnesia, or has part of his memory, for example, been lost after dying and coming back to life? It's probably the most complicated part of this trailer to theorize about. Death Stranding's new trailer emits a completely new vibe, one that is surprisingly calm and peaceful. A large part of that is thanks to the song used in this trailer, which is called Asylums for the Feeling by Silent Poets. There is no doubt in my mind, it has been purposefully picked. All you need to do is listen to the lyrics and you'll instantly recognize certain elements that have been presented to us.
Hideo Kojima has revealed that there are some answers to our questions hidden inside this trailer. These are for you, the fans who have shown your tremendous ability to imagine, search for clues and wreck your brains to solve the mysteries. But the answers here are still only part of the mystery. Our game is still in play. Fans around the world are in the middle of finding these answers. For example, some have already speculated that Lindsay's necklace is a code that may finally reveal some of the answers to what I've wanted to know for so long. But even then, Death Stranding's new trailer leaves me wondering. How did the world become this way? What is the purpose of these evil entities? How does Matt Mickelson's character tie into all of this, as well as the World War II timeline teased in the second trailer? And finally, what can we truly expect from the gameplay, outside of delivering packages and exploring this world? These are questions for another time, but for now, I look forward to Death Stranding more than ever, knowing that one day I will be able to find the answers. Thanks a lot everyone for watching yet another one of my in-depth gaming videos. I really hope you enjoyed it. It's the second one actually that I've done on Death Stranding and I normally don't have that, that I obsess over theories that I can find online or try to look up as much stuff as I can about a certain game. But Death Stranding is just a special case. I've been intrigued by the premise of this story from day one and I can't wait to find out more about it. I hope that for those of you who, you know, maybe haven't had the time to absolutely dive into everything yet, uh, that this video cleared a lot of stuff up and that you now have a better idea of what the game will be about. But let me know that in the comments and if you have some theories to share with me, do that because I'd love to discuss with you, um, you know, some more stuff about the game. Anyway, with that being said, I need to really quickly, of course, stress out that it's only through your support that I can keep making videos like this. I just spent the entire last week putting this video together and I really hope that the, you know, result has paid off. But if you want to help support me, then please go to patreon.com slash gaming and do so with just a single dollar per month or more if you can miss it. Um, it's only through your support that I can keep making stuff like this. And if you do so, you also get a bunch of awesome rewards like early access to these videos, my monthly Q&A series, and you show up in the credits of these type of in-depth gaming videos. So with that being said, I'd really appreciate it. And then for now, thanks a lot for watching and hope to see you again next time.